It is Wednesday morning, man. And I know that by the time everybody else sees this, it'll be a little bit later in the day. But uh, I'm always grateful to do this with you. And I love the Michigan uh, sweatshirt today, by the way. It's Wednesday morning somewhere. Let's go with that. It's Wednesday morning somewhere. I like that. I like that. How do you feel about uh, Michigan in the in the Rose Bowl, man? We've been here before. Win a semifinal and get to the championship game, and then we can talk. Getting to the getting to the semifinal is um is 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 getting us a, a, a B. Now we won't even say a C. It's a B. You did you did what you expected to do. It's kind of where you want to be, but it doesn't really mean as much until you take that next step and get that A, get into the uh, championship game. Yeah, I actually think this year uh, is a year that benefits Michigan a whole lot more in terms of the the, the time that they have to prepare because it's not necessarily the Alabama teams of old that we've seen, and it gives Jim Harbaugh an opportunity to really get in there and game plan, something that I think uh, puts this Michigan team in a position to win. So hopefully, man. Yeah, Hopefully. we got to be able to run the ball. It's, it's college football. You got to run the ball, and they had they didn't do that well the last couple of games. Not traditional Michigan, just pound, 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 run the ball, and that's what I'm uh, a little leery about. Is can they run the ball against a good Alabama defense? Yeah. That's that's the concern. Well, hey, let's get into it, man. Obviously, the Pistons have lost twenty in a row, but we got some business to take care of first. What up, dope people? It's your boy Brandon Dent, aka Detroit Kool Aid, and you are rocking out with the Woodward Pistons podcast on the Woodward Sports Network. Uh, hey, just jumped off of the morning Woodward show where I was doing sound with uh, Mr. Hollywood himself, Jeff I and Freddie, and Sam. Uh, I guess they call him Flan- Flannel Sam now. And a uh, shout out to the new guy. We call him New Guy Kenny or KG or Kenny or whatever we want to call him. He's he's pretty dope, man. His dreads are are pretty pretty clean too. And uh, shout out to JB as well, man. The morning show is definitely holding it down. It's our number one show on the network, so I'm grateful to be involved. Hollywood Jeff used his pull and his sway to uh, pull me up the ranks. So he doesn't hey, use it you? just to get food delivered to him on, like, little bots and things. We got Water Bottle Jeff today? Water Bottle Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> but let's get you drum rolled in here. Hey. Shout out and welcome to the legend Detroit News, Rod Beard. Brother, how are you doing? And then take it away with Rod's thoughts. I am doing wonderful. It is a uh, it's a day off for me, and I don't get uh, very many of those during the week. I got to figure out something to do with myself today. Maybe I'll go, maybe I'll go bowling. I don't know. I, I got I can do Ooh. stuff today. We'll see. But bowling, um, I like that. My let's talk in season tournament. <laughs> um Lakers win. It's just LeBron willing a, a, a team to to do that. And Indiana made an amazing run getting by Boston and Milwaukee on the, the pathway there. Yeah, it just didn't do a lot. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. It didn't do a lot, even through the, the final. It just was. Blah, it blah. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it didn't do for me what the NBA was trying to do, which was instill this every game matters and the 500,000 for each player on the winning team. Um, I think that still says the rich are getting richer. So it's still yay for them. They're getting extra half mil. What are we getting? Are we getting something out of this? Is it exciting basketball? Is it high level? Um, And I, I think the real winner out of that whole thing is is Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah, he got definitely. to be on. Um, I'll call it a national stage, and and just to be able to um, show that he can be that type of player. And Pistons fans should bristle at the idea that Halliburton is now in that different stratosphere um, because he was a guy they could have had in that draft. And uh, I'll throw a little a little hook on the end of that. Killian is playing better that it's not at Halliburton level, but this is what, if he were this during his second year, then I would, people would feel a whole lot different about him, but the injuries and everything else, this is a little bit more of what they thought Killian would be when they drafted him is this type of attack the rim, attack the paint, get the ball to guys in there, the floaters, 
this he's starting to show really what he is. It's is it too late? Don't know. But I think this is a, a better reflection of who he was and in, in going into the draft and who they thought he would they were getting. Yeah, man. Draft. Low turnovers, high assist numbers. You know, um, obviously you you want to have Tyrese Halliburton, but the guy that we do have in Killian Hayes, even though it's taking some time for him to kind of reach this mark. I've consistently said it. I believe that he is a good guard to have off the bench, especially if they can negotiate something uh, on a cheaper scale um, going forward with Killian Hayes because I think he knows the system. He's getting comfortable. And um, I like the way he plays, man. As of late, he has seemed a lot more confident, and that's the one thing that we've consistently said for years. When we see uh, confident Killian Hayes, we see the type of player that we can at least say, you know what? I can get with it. I can dig it. Yep. But when we don't see that Killian Hayes, we see a guy who's put dropping his head after each missed shot. We see a guy whose defense is suffering because of it. But, you know, his defense has been something that this year, at least, uh, especially over like the last two weeks, that's been um, pretty prime, man. Uh, I'm seeing him absolutely just take the ball from guards trying to dance in front of him and such. So, yeah, and it's no, like we said, it's no, no cap, you know, in terms of, sitting here saying it was the right pick over Tyrese, but in terms of the people that we do have, you got to do what you got to do with what you have. But I did find this, bro, from December 6th on Wednesday, 2023. Hold on, let me see if y'all can see this. From USA Today, minor fixes would go far in NBA in-season tournament. Columnist says tweaks would resolve awkward moments in an otherwise solid season. So you're not the only one. You're not the only one. I've seen this now from several different people, and uh, I saw Adam uh, Silver also talk about it as well, saying that a lot of this kind of came together um, very, very quickly, and including the courts, you know, that it was kind of cookie cutter, but moving forward, they're looking to bring some type of tweaks to this whole in-season tournament to make it a little bit better, because I think the idea, I think the idea is good, but I, I just believe it felt like a rushed product, something that they were just trying to roll out there to satisfy or appease new sponsors. Um, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. And Tyrese Halliburton, man, that guy is just on a whole nother level. Yeah. He came here to Detroit right after that game and put up 16 assists, I think 14 points, and hit some daggers down the stretch against the Pistons. And they played them tough. They played them tough. And that's kind of been <sighs> – I know people probably don't want to hear this, but that's been kind of the reoccurring theme of the Pistons this year. There's been so many games, bro, I've been at LCA, and they've been leading going into the fourth quarter, and then they lose by double digits. And I just don't understand what's going on as it relates to that component of it. Is it just they're a young team still? Is it just it takes time for teams to learn how to win? You know, um, because, uh, what was it, 84-82? going into the fourth quarter against the Indiana Something, Pacers. Yeah, it was it was it was right there and I think Boyan said it too. He said they got to play a full 48. And that's not a foreign concept, but it's it's really just when you go into that fourth quarter people used to talk about winning quarters a lot. Just win the fourth quarter. It, it you you did the hard part getting there. You're not chasing a team and you're not down by 8 in the fourth quarter starting the fourth quarter and you got to you got to win and then win by 9. You just win. Just outscore them by one point. Or if, if only let them outscore you by one and you win the game. And that's where I think you need that veteran to lean on uh, that says, give me the ball. Let's settle down. You're not going to have fourth and fifth year guys and under. With the exception of maybe, um, I mean, you got Burks and Boyan and Joe Harris to some degree. But other than those, you're relying on young guys. You've got the youngest rotation in the league. Yep. You're going to take some bumps. You're going to have to learn how to win. And it doesn't matter how good Cade is. He's going to need someone to take some of that pressure off of him on a few possessions. So I think that's part of this. What, what Monty is going to have to do is figure out what combinations are going to work down the stretch. And then you get into the injuries and you don't have Duran and blah, 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 blah. Fans have heard that, all of that stuff before. Yeah. Just win a damn game. It's, it's, yeah. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's kind of what it is. Win a game. Don't let us go down with the the, the process Sixers as being the, the teams with the longest losing streaks in NBA history. 
And so you've got to do it. And you got the Sixers twice coming up. You got Milwaukee. It's not going to be easy, but you got to win one of these games. It's pretty simple. Yeah. And, and you know, talking about Kay Cunningham, Rick Carlisle had uh, some pretty nice things to say about him. But the the quote that just kind of took off was uh, him saying that Kay Cunningham is an all star caliber player. And I know that, that to start the season and throughout the season, there's been people who've kind of doubted who he is. Because I've heard people say he doesn't look like he did his rookie season. Honestly, it's the defenses. Um, Mind you, we mm-hmm. talked about it as well with the way that defenses are now starting to defend players like Kay Cunningham and Jay Nivey and such. Uh, life is not as easy as before because they know that Kay Cunningham, like Kevin Durant said, is a type of player that can wreck a whole team's defense, a whole team's game plan. And so now you see them defending him a lot different going into some of these fourth quarters. And that's where it kind of plays into what you're saying. They need to be able to get some valuable players in here that can take some of that pressure off of them. Now, I, I do believe that Boyan can do a little of that, and I know he's still getting his sea legs underneath him as he's come back from injury. And uh, in certain parts of the game, he's looking good. You know, from three, he took seven attempts himself in the last game and uh, sank three of those. Uh, what I'm waiting to see from him again is that consistency uh, in the mid-range from him, uh, whether it's kind of back to the basket, whether it's dribbling around a pick and roll and getting in there and shooting. But um, I feel like the Pistons have the recipe to win a game over these next, what? They got to win one in their next eight games to not tie the record, I believe. Uh, record is 26, I think. The single Ooh, single season the record is 26, and the overall record is 29. I believe okay. that's right. Sheesh. But um, – one thing that I see a lot of people on here, and it ain't it ain't it ain't happening the way this 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 the way the schedule is set up. It ain't uh, it ain't looking good. <laughs> I, I saw it, man. I was sitting here wondering, like, can they get Utah? Can they get the Nets? Can they pop Atlanta? Can they can they sneak up and get one of these teams? And uh, you want to say, yeah, but like you said, we haven't seen anything other than the first three games of the season that's proven that this team can actually bring it home. And that's uh, that's the part of it that's been kind of uh, the most surprising to me is that they've had games where they were absolutely winning going down the stretch, and they just can't seem to pull it together. But, again, it goes back to what you said. K mm-hmm. needs help. Now, there's a lot of people out there who they put this on Troy Weaver that K doesn't have the help that he needs right now. I believe that Troy Weaver has gone out there and tried to put some of that incremental help. Like I believe that Alec Burks, Boyan Bogdanovich, um, even Joe Harris to a lesser degree, I believe that those players are to some degree that incremental help. I don't think that they're the players that you go out there when you say we have two or three all-stars on our squad right now. I don't think that they're that they're that type of help. But in terms of giving them somebody else that can take a little bit of the attention off, yeah, I think that he's that. Yeah, we saw in those first three quarters against the Indiana Pacers, um, the offense looked really good. They went through some lulls, but ultimately when you got Cade, Ivy, Boyan out there together, even without Jalen Duran, they looked pretty good. Um, they were able to kind of get into the paint. They were able to dish out to the three-point uh, shooters. And um, ultimately in the fourth quarter, they just kind of fell apart because those same shots weren't falling. You know, And I don't know if it's just the pressure getting to them, but I wanted to be able to get kind of just your unadulterated thoughts on your assessment on Troy Weaver. I I have a certain thought process, and I talked about this with Mike Curtis, actually, at the last shoot around we went to at the Pistons Performance Center, that there's nothing to defend on the court right now. You know what so, I mean? There's nothing to defend. But in terms of what they have to yeah, actually bring in yeah. those players, he's made that. He, he has that, but it's not going to come until they can get into this offseason. Some people think he shouldn't even get the opportunity by this offseason to even do that. So I want to be able to get your unadulterated thoughts on it. I I would get if his if his um biggest asset right now is the, the cap space that he's created, you gotta let him use that. You can't let him you can't move on before he's had a chance to say, okay, here's the, here's the trump card that I'm going to play that this is what I, I built all of this up to kind of lead to. This is, this is the, the big play that I have in all of this. You can't let him go before that. 
but it's really got to be impactful and effective. And we've been talking about it. you need an all star player. And for me, who would you say is untouchable on this roster? Untouchable. You would if if somebody called and said, "We'll give you an all star level player, but you got to include this person." Who's the who's who? Are, who would that person be that you would say, "I'm not doing"? Cade, Osar Thompson, Jalen Duran. And I'm actually a little split on Jade and Ivy. Okay. But that's, beyond that's, that, there everybody else is kind of I think you can you can convince me if you tell me who it is that I might include Ivy. Um because his shooting hasn't the, the other things are there, but you can find, I would say you can find lightning quick uber athletic you can find maybe one more of those but if you tell me you're getting me an all-star not all-star caliber an all-star wing i could i could say okay i i would throw in jade knight so that's that's the 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 issue here is what can what can you go and get with the pieces that you have and maybe though the value isn't there to get you what you want you don't have draft picks and we talked about that ad nauseum you don't have draft picks you don't have an all-star to trade you don't really have an all-star caliber player that you're willing to part with um uh, unless the team values boy on that way but i don't think he's valued that much um yeah so how do you go and get an all-star player if you're not willing to give up something similar if you wanted, um, I keep saying Zach Levine, and and that's that's kind of where I am. The Zach Levine profile of a player, maybe even DeRozan, is a more um, realistic or logical sort of thing. Teams are aren't going to trade in the division uh, as much, but that's the profile of a player that I would like to see them go out and try to get. Um, because that's that's what's missing. Here's a possession. We need to score. Give it to that dude. And that dude can't always be Cade. And it can't yeah. be um, Boyan who's trying to find his legs. If Boyan was was fully healthy, started the season, and he was playing like this, and then I could say, okay, you know what? But you can't lean on injuries and say that's the reason that they're not doing well. That was half of Stan Van Gundy's tenure was injuries. Reggie Jackson um Blake Griffin blah 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 injuries 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 every coach is going to have it you have to as a GM you have to build a roster that's going to withstand that fans can understand that but you have to withstand injuries and just say you know what okay well maybe we're not going to win 45 games but let's win 35 and and have a shot at doing something so uh, for for Troy I think it is you've you've got to be a little bit more aggressive than you've been He's been very measured in a lot of the stuff that he's done in draft picks. Um, and, and we've talked about this too, is that individually you take each of these picks in a vacuum and they make sense. But for whatever yep. reason, when they get on the court and they play together, it just doesn't stick together the way that you want it to. It's it, it's not showing the, um, in the, the way, the type of players that you have. And, and I always use lifetime fitness or, or some pickup game that you go <laughs> to somewhere. You look and you're like, okay, we got the five best dudes in the gym. Why are we losing? Well, this other team all came together. They're cohesive. They got a dude that just rebounds and does not look to score. He will go and set three or four screens. He will rebound. He'll kick it out to the, the, the point guard who does not score, who gets it to, who makes the right plays. And that's where you're seeing the Pistons when, and I, I, I'm trying to remember the exact point. I think they were down like four. They had, they had cut the Pacers lead to like four. And somebody came down and shot a three. And I'm like, why? Yeah. Why? That's yep. not, that's not the, sh yeah, if you make it, everybody's going to say yay. But you had been chipping away at this lead. Keep chipping away at the lead. You don't need a three right here. And that's the difference between a disciplined team that's going to come down and, and a young team that just says, hey, this shot is here. This is in rhythm. This is what we would want to take in, in the first quarter. But in a fourth quarter, you need a bucket. And that's when you kind of watch the Lakers 
that you will see that from LeBron. When we need a bucket, we'll get it to Austin Reeves. We'll move it around. But they're going to AD. They're going to LeBron when they need a bucket. Yeah. You see that all the time. D, uh, D'Angelo Russell knows that. Hey, I'm not shooting this. I'm not taking something uh-huh. out of three. I'm getting this ball to LeBron or I'm getting it to AD in the post. And, and we'll get to the free throw line and make something happen. So I think that's what's missing from this mix. And that's, again, you go and get an all-star and you clear up a lot of those problems. Yeah, no, I agree with a lot of what you just said there. And I know that one of the things here with the Pistons is for them to really, really make the jump that we want to see them do in terms of talent on this squad, you're right. They can't even trade their draft pick right now. But when they get to the draft, it usually takes, what, two young players or a young player in a top draft pick to be able to go out there and 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 have the starting point for being able to bring in another star in a trade when they get to the draft. And this is the the thing that I was talking about with a friend. Uh, his name is Eric Chase, longtime radio guy. Yep. Uh, I know he. Yep. A yeah, good guy, man. Good guy. He actually uh, was one of the people who introduced me to Woodward Sports, actually, as well. And, um, you know, we were talking about it because he's a Philadelphia 76ers fan. And so we were comparing kind of the process versus what's going on with the Pistons right now. And one of the things I was telling him is that, you know, I'm not trying to cap or cape or take up for Troy Weaver right now. My thing is if this thing was always four to five years, and we talked about it when they signed Marvin Bagley, when they re-signed Boyan Bogdanovich, we said that their windows were when those guys were on the final years of their deal. That's when this team was going to be able to take the necessary steps forward. And the other thing is this, that draft pick, when they get to the draft, after they select the player, they're able to trade that player. They just can't trade the draft pick right now. And so there's a lot that I want to see the Pistons do right now to be able to satiate what's going on right now. But I do believe that Troy Weaver has set this team up very, very well. Now, do I believe he thought they would be kind of this bad, you know, the product on the floor being this bad, losing 20 in a row right now. I do not think so. Not at all. I think that with the acquisitions of Jalen Duran and Alec Burks, you know, last year with the um, acquisition of Boyan Bogdanovich and then extending him, I think that he thought they were kind of making those incremental moves to help this team learn how to win, but they just haven't really been healthy. Alec Burks has missed a lot of time. Jalen Duran has missed time. Boyan Bogdanovich has mm-hmm. missed a lot of time as well. And when you're talking about a young team getting that chemistry, we're talking about a young team. We used to hear, Mm -hmm. I remember when the Pistons first signed Rasheed Wallace, when they first traded for him. And it was kind of bumpy roads at first, and then they took off, and people said, you know, they have to basically get that chemistry together. They give that to good teams. But for teams like the Pistons of this year, I don't know how much people give them that, you know. Um, you got new players entering the lineup. You have new play. You have some players uh, going out due to injury. It's like they just get Boyan back, and now Jalen Duran is out. You know, and where Jalen mm-hmm. Duran helps is if they're missing some of these threes down the stretch. Well, he would have been one of those guys that could absolutely bang with uh with Miles Turner on the Pacers. They didn't really have anybody that could match up with him effectively. Stu, I thought, did a really really good job, but Jalen Duran would have done an even better job. And honestly, giving this team an opportunity to truly win this game. There was um, plays at the rim. Um, and and that, that reminds me. I'm hoping that this team brings in a rim protector. So aside from a score, I'm hoping they get one of those guys with a nasty streak who can absolutely play in the paint and bring a certain level of uh, toughness to complement uh, what Stewart does in the paint as well. But somebody just a little bit taller, somebody with uh, that knack to really, really, really protect the rim. And I believe that Asar Thompson has a little bit of that, but he's playing on the wing position. So it doesn't really put him in position to be a good help side defender in the paint. Mm-hmm. And so aside from getting a flat out score, I am really hoping that they get one of those kind of incremental moves to bring in one of those guys that can absolutely be one of those kind of paint lockdown guys. We we saw, you know, I don't know what he's doing now, but Thomas Bryant of the Miami Heat, when we played them early in the season, he came off the bench. And he played a very, very specific role for the Heat. And it honestly was part of the reasons why they beat us that game. Because he came in and was rebounding everything. He was getting blocked. He was grabbing rebounds. And he's not one of their main players, but he plays that role to a T. And he did it really, really good. He's one of those players that I was saying we need to go get. Last year, I wrote a couple articles stating what exactly I would like to see this team get. 
they got the three and D, or not the three and D. I'll say they got the defensive wing in Asar Thompson. It's still to be seen if he's going to develop the shot, but I like what he's able to do outside of the shot. Last game, I think he was seven to ten or something like that, and he was able to get into the rim, get into the paint, get to the rim. Um, his mid range shot is looking pretty good. Um, so he's making up for the fact that he's not necessarily hitting threes when he's able to get into that paint. And then his defense is on a whole nother level. But another one uh, was a flat out three point shooter, which I do believe they have in Boyan Bogdanovich if he's healthy and Ali Burks if he's healthy. It was good to see him make a couple threes in this last game. But I always wanted this team to get one of those 6'10 bruisers, man. Just one of those guys that can go out there and, you know, like I think Stewart is, is great at you know being that tough guy but there's a lot of plays where he's out on the perimeter as well and i saw him defending tyrese halliburton pretty effectively on some of those plays so it's just like if we can get kind of one of those guys that can be in the paint and that can deter people because we saw desmond bain waltzing into the lane waltzing into the lane getting layups we saw tyrese halliburton just waltzing into the lane getting layups all in the fourth quarter and we can go back to all of the games and that's been one of the things that i've just been like you know what if we're talking about Detroit Pistons basketball, I think that we have some of the recipe here, but we absolutely need a few more of those bruisers. Absolutely. So let, let me do this real quick. If you're going to trade for some player, at this point of the year, you need to find, or, or we'll get to December 15th and when, when most of the league can, can start trading players. And starting to, to move up toward the deadline, you need a team who is not living up to expectations and ready to mix it up some kind of way. They're a little stale and they're not quite where they thought they might be. So look at the standings in the West. Yep. Uh, um, the Warriors are in 11th place. Behind the Pelicans. Hmm. So who's below the Warriors? The Jazz, Grizzlies, Blazers, Spurs. You can take the Grizzlies out of this because they as soon as they get John Morant back, they they'll they'll start making a move. Can you poach yeah. anybody off of the Jazz that interests you at in the in the least bit? That's an all-star caliber player. Probably not. I could I could listen. If you told me John Collins was available, I could listen to it because I think he yeah. can be an all star. And what's he averaging? 14 and a half, eight and a half rebounds. He's shooting 38% from three. What's the volume on those three? So uh, just under four a game. Okay. That, I can is that, that where Laurie is too? Uh, Laurie, I would say, is probably higher than that. He's uh he's with Utah as well, right? Yeah, what's what's his three? He's 22%. No, 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 no. Wow. 38% from three, and he's shooting eight a game. Ooh. So he's launching eight and a half threes a game. But he's shooting 38%. So that's I, I would take that too. If if you say Utah is a team that that might want to acquire some some picks and continue to build on that. Can you? I could listen to Collins. I could listen to Jordan Clarkson even, because hmm. that dude just just scores. He's at sixteen a game, and I don't even think he's starting. Is he starting? He is starting for them. Um, but it, if you believe Jordan Clarkson's a player who could be an All Star, has he reached his ceiling already, or does he have a little bit more to go, or is he a stopgap for what you're trying to do? And he feels more like a stock gap than an all-star. But if that's all you're able to go out and get, then, I mean, that's that's it. So then you go to the Blazers. Who's there on the Blazers that could help you? Well, we, we said the Blazers? Oh, Jeremy Grant. You mean the team with Jeremy, Jeremy Grant? Grant? Right, so you just think. <laughs> that, that team with Jeremy Grant. You could, you, you could have sold me on... Matisse Thibel before, I think he's a solid player. And I think I mentioned him before as somebody who I, I would want them to go out and get. But there's not 
who else is there on that squad that you are that excited about? Shaden Sharp? Mm. Mm. Maybe. So I think I that's think the that's that's the exercise you have to do in order to say where can they go and poach an all-star off of somebody else's team. Are are the 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 Spurs going to talk to you at all because they're trying to build around Vic? Do they do they want to come up of, off of anybody? Who do you want on that roster? I know a lot of fans are saying uh find some way to trade Killian Hayes to the San Antonio Spurs. But I don't know how much that actually gets you back unless you part with some other stuff. Right. Are, are do you want Kelden? Are they are they willing to part with Kelden? Eh, probably not. I mean so so that's that's the type of exercise that I say if we're we're saying an all-star is what they need, where do they go and find an all-star? Um the Wizards, I'm I'm just I can't even do the Wizards. I it, it hurts me to look <laughs> at their roster. To to is Kuzma that guy? Is Kuzma really that dude? That's that's a question, bro. That that really is a question because obviously when he came here, it seemed like he was auditioning. He absolutely put it on us. But in terms of the consistency, is he that guy? And it's just like, I don't know. Part of me is like, if you can make and something I, I, like that happen for a Kuzma without necessarily gutting your talent base, I would probably look at it. I definitely will look at it um, because I think that they need to get somebody in here uh, before the end of the season to be able to at least try and stay the ship. You know, something to kind of stabilize what's going on right now so that this roster isn't just one of the younger ones. But I get you. I I, I can't. Oh, I can't pay Jordan Poole 30 million. I can't do no. it. No, nope. I can't. Not at all. And Kuzma's, Kuzma's 25 and a half this year. And it, it, his is descending. So it's 23, 21, 19 for the next couple of years. Okay. I can't. I can't. Man. Kuzma doesn't do it for me. That that, but that that's your problem, is that if you are trying to say where do they go get an all star, there's no there are very few teams that are really out of it. Everybody can say we're um we're, we're in play in position that we can do something, and that's what kind of led me to, to the Zach Levine conversation, or the the DeRozan is one of yeah. those guys might be able to help you, but it's gonna they're not gonna trade in the division and then. What are you what are you willing to give up? If you told me Zach Levine was available, you could I could I could part with Asar Thompson. That's how Ooh, bad it is. Spicy. That is that is that is how bad it is. That's how much you need an all-star in order to make this happen. And you spicy. can't you can't go. I I, I really like. Duran's game and where he's going to fit when he figures it all out. Yeah. But if 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 you told me it had to be a SAR in order to get Zach Levine, I would him and Haw, I would um throw a tantrum on the floor, but if that was the the clincher to make it happen, okay, then let's go get Zach Levine. Let's make it happen. That that's 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 how what's what it's going to take and you can't find anybody else cuz of all the names we just said, if you say Zach Levine, and then you're talking Kuzma, Jordan Poole, um, Kelton Johnson, something like there's a very clear line between yeah. all of those dudes. Zach Levine is an all-star, is yeah. a scorer. Defensively, he doesn't help you quite the same, but that dude is a, a definitive all-star. And that's something that you would be able to go and get if you're willing to give up enough. And again, I don't, I don't know what the Bulls would be asking for it, and but get a third team involved. Let's at least have the conversation and see what it would take to yep. pull that off. Because they, they, I'm sure that they don't want to trade within a division. But I do believe that the Pistons' young core, which is another cap, you know, feather in the cap of Troy Weaver, I do believe that is very attractive. I do, I do believe that they have the pieces that would make a team within a division stop and think and say, you know what, I do like Ivy or I do like Vassar especially with the price. These guys are on rookie scale deals for the next, what, three or four years, respectively. Uh, and so it, it it puts you in a situation to where even though they might not want to have or have to see Levine four times a season, 
it puts you in a position to where you actually have the young players necessary to be able to go out there and make a deal happen. And I was telling somebody this as well, Eric Chase, in the conversation, is that when Troy Weaver started here, he was like, there's nothing better that Troy Weaver has done. Right? Like you're in the same place that you were in the beginning of this. And I said, well, no, they have no long-term contracts on the book. Mm -hmm. They have massive cap space. The dead money rolls off the books this year. Mind you, we on social media were raising banners for Josh Smith's money rolling off the books during Troy Weaver's uh, first year here. Like, we don't have that type of stuff anymore. We don't have an Andre Drummond maxed out and a Blake Griffin. And we have a young core that's much better than when he got here, which was Bruce Brown and Luke Kennard. I don't really know what those players were able to fetch except for lower first-round draft picks. That's it. But you, it, but you, it's but like you, now we you, got young you, players that can actually be enticing to another team to be able to bring in maybe another disgruntled star. But you, you know what cap space is? Cap space is a gift card to a store. You still have to find something to go and use it on. Yeah. And it it is a specific, you're not using, you still have to find something. You have to find a deal to make it work. You can give me a $500 Amazon gift card. But you're like, okay, can I go get a big 40 inch TV or 50 inch TV <laughs> with that thing? Yeah, but I might need to put something else with it. And that's where they are. They got to put something yeah. else with that cap space to make it really be something that is desirable, that they they that, that's going to make a difference in what they're trying to do. The cap space itself is just, yeah, I got a gift card. Yay. But that's not helping me watch a game right now. I need to actually nope. go do something with this. And that's the... That's an asset. I'm, don't don't paint it the wrong way. Uh, uh, cap space is the asset that they need. But again, where where are you using that? If it doesn't get you a an all star caliber player, then it doesn't matter. Having a gift card is better than having no money at all and being in debt. Yeah, but it, you can't go get a TV in that case either. But the gift card really is now. I got to find something that that I can use that's at this limit. I can't. I don't have seven hundred dollars. I got five hundred. So I can only get a limited amount of TV with that. So how do I how do I figure out which one I want to go do to make this work? This this work. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's the issue, and that's where we are with Troy Weaver. Is he's got this this asset, but what can you really viably go get with it? What All Star is available? What teams are willing to deal with you? And that starts to to clamp down a little bit more and make that. A little bit less valuable. Cap space is cap space. Yeah, yep. And that's why I'm 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 still sitting here. I'm like, okay, if they wanted to do something after December fifteenth, you have Boyan and one of your young players that you could trade to be able to bring somebody in. And then when you get to the off season, this is why it's so important to allow that draft pick to convey to convey back to the Detroit Pistons because it's going to be a top five pick at this rate minimum. And that top five pick plus another young player allows you to go out there and really get busy especially with teams who are looking to sign other players, just like when the Knicks, they wanted to be able to go and sign Jalen Brunson and the Pistons were sitting there with their cap space, will, ready, willing, and able to take on all their junk, Alec Burks, Kevin Knox, and Jalen Duran to be able to make uh, that possible for the Knicks. And so I'm hoping that, you know, going into uh, this trade deadline, that they'd make something happen. And I'm also hoping that as they go into the, free agency and a draft and all of that, that they also go then and make something else happen because I, they need talent and they're short. One guy will be good, but they need a couple guys. And that's what, you know, Troy Weaver, um, seven days before free agency this last year, he said that they're going to make a couple splashes next, next off season. And um, I, you know, I told people this too, like, you know, if he doesn't do that, like you said, like if he, if he can't put it together, that's where then I get a little bit more critical. But as it relates to four to five year rebuild right now, I actually like what he has to work with. And I think that as this thing continues to get closer to the trade deadline and then closer to the draft, we're going to actually see Troy Weaver do kind of some of his more masterful work than we've seen here um, as Pistons GM. The other component of it is, you know, there's more than just one cook in that kitchen. You know, obviously there's still Ed Stefanski and Arn Tellum there as well. And I'm hoping that that works in the Pistons' favor. That's what I'm hoping. You know, they got connections to players all over the league. Dwayne Casey's still there, too, and I got to speak with him. And uh, I know he's scouting not just uh, prospects, but NBA players now, too. So I'm hoping that that means something very, very well for the Pistons. But I think that's a wrap, man. 
Yeah, no, no, it's, it's good talk, talk as always, but I, I think um, we just got to get this, uh, we got to get this next stage of the conversation going is kind of where are you getting this player that you need? And I think that's, that's the, everybody will tell you that this team just doesn't have enough talent yet. How do you get to an all-star player? And yeah, what I just went through is kind of what you're looking at, unless there's somebody else who surprises you and says they're not happy with a player. Um, like it's not John Moran. You're not getting John Moran. <laughs> but how how do you maybe it's a marketing, maybe it's a um a John Collins, maybe you can come up on something like that to help make your roster better. But it's you gotta make some tough decisions. And who are you willing to part with? It's not just that cap space, that's not the only asset you have. You got to be part, willing to part with some players. And I mean, again, you, you tell me who it is. Maybe I can part with Asar. Maybe I can part with Jaden Ivey. Um, I think Duran and Cade are my two untouchables. So those are the ones that I am not even yeah. listening to. Man, I thought this one was a, a lot of meat, man. I like this one. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I definitely want you guys to put in the comments who are some players that uh, you're looking at um, as it relates to who you wish the Pistons we try and target, um, whether it be coming free agents or disgruntled stars or even players that you think would add more to the NBA, um, kind of just good players that you can have on a squad. So now, now, you know, now, 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 Brandon, let me say this. You yeah. have to add on to that. Make it realistic because they will send yeah. you the trade machine with LeBron and then nine Pistons on this side. Of that they're willing to give up for LeBron, and hey, it works in the trade machine, so let's do it. Ooh, it, it, I'm glad it you has, said that. It <laughs> has to be. It has to be something that's realistic. Don't send me, um, don't send me the the Kevin Durant's and the Giannis's, and hey, it works in the trade machine. We're all good here. No, it it make it somebody that is realistic that a team that is actually would would pick up the phone and not um, <laughs> not not go spam likely the next time you tried to call because. You you came up with something ridiculous. We always I have like to throw that. that little caveat in there. Man, I like that. Yeah. Listen, make it realistic. We'll talk about those on the next pod. We're not going to give any time to the ones that's like the whole Pistons roster for LeBron and AD. We can't do it. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in to the Wilbur Pistons podcast on the Wilbur Sports Network. My name is Brandon Dent, a.k.a. Detroit Kool-Aid. And we're about to get the legend here drum rolled out. You guys ready? Hey yo, shout out and thank you to the legend Detroit News Rod Beard. Brother, I hope you have a good rest of your day. You do the same, bro. Thank you, brother. Peace. All right, you guys. Till next time.